good tree? Now, six months ago, I bought the cheapest Tesla Model S in the USA, and it's not because I'm a tree hugger or lover, nor am I a part of Elon Musk's cult. Musk's? Elon Musk's, Musk's cult. I really bought this thing as a 2012 Model S 85 model with 106,000 miles for only $33,500 because I wanted things to go wrong with it. I wanted to see what it was like to own an old Tesla with a bunch of miles out of warranty and have all kinds of things go wrong with it and then rant about electric cars and how they're going to fall apart and leave you stranded. But unfortunately, this thing has been totally flawless. I haven't had a single real issue, almost. But I'm thinking about selling it because, well, I'm a moron. Now, I credit the previous owner with my Tesla's incredible reliability over these last six months because he had taken care of all the issues. He was the original owner, he was the father of one of the Tesla engineers, and every little hiccup this car had and all the common Tesla issues have been taken care of for the most part. Three out of four of these power retractable door handles have been replaced, along with that giant touchscreen in the center console, as well as the drive motor unit. They have bearings that go out in them and Apparently the latest version has ceramic bearings. I don't know this all that well, but it has the latest version of it. So I pretty much got a brand new Tesla from it. But the car hasn't been entirely drama free these last six months or so, but that's mostly because of pilot error. My fiance has been driving this car more than anybody else, especially since he took a job recently that was a pretty long commute and this thing doesn't use gas, but she's forgotten on a number of occasions to plug it in at night, and then there's a giant fire drill the next day of what car is she going to drive. Not the Rolls Royce and the rest of the cars in the garage are manual transmissions, which she can't drive, so it kind of turns into a mess. And then also, we've forgotten one time to plug in this car when we went on vacation, which just sitting parked in the sun, this thing uses electricity to keep all of the fragile electronics cool on the inside. So you can lose 10, 20 miles a day if it's sitting out in the heat. And we were gone for a week, had about 100 miles left on the range, and it almost ran out of battery. I ended up calling my neighbor and asking him to plug it in for me because if this Tesla were to brick, you have to tow it to the nearest Tesla facility for them to plug it into whatever they have and get it going again. And the nearest Tesla facility from Wichita, Kansas is almost 200 miles away. Also, my fiance, she's you know an okay driver, but she ran it up on a parking curb and she broke some brackets here in the front bumper. Gonna need to get that fixed. Tally ho. Oh, House of the Rising Sun, the animals. Now I did have one big failure with this Tesla. The battery failed, and that's total clickbait. The battery failed in the key fob, the little Tesla battery. I was able to pop out the bottom and replace it. It was only $2 to fix, and it never left me stranded. The Tesla would warn me that the battery was getting low on this thing for, for weeks before I ended up replacing the battery. So, you know, despite its dazzling technology, the touch screen, you know, it's kind of like an iPad. The, the car itself, in principle is really simple. Now in the short time I've owned the car, I've seen no battery degradation at all other than normal seasonal changes. It's not as good in the cold as far as range, but that's totally normal. And it's totally normal for these Tesla batteries to hold up long-term, no problem. Tesla actually has a chart where they're documenting all of their early Model S's and it seems like most of them have 90% or more of their battery life left after even 160, 170,000 miles. And that's right where mine's at, at 112, about to hit 112,000 miles. Now I've sort of noticed this trend with Toyota Priuses as well. They have a totally different setup. It's a hybrid with a motor and a, a nickel battery rather than a lithium ion battery. But it doesn't seem to matter how many miles you put on a Toyota Prius, the battery holds together. What does kill the battery is age. It seems to happen all at once. And it's almost like someone's flipped a switch and for the Prius, it seems to be about the 10 year mark, or at least that's what I've noticed from going to dealer auctions for years and years. Once the Prius hits about 10 years old, good chance that battery's taken a dump. Now, I expect this Tesla to do better because it's a lithium ion battery, so maybe that life will be longer, but only time will tell. Yeah. 
yeah, that battery is still doing just fine. It's kind of hard going back to other cars when you have that much torque instantly at your foot. And it is really smooth and quiet. That's one of the things I really like about this Tesla, especially after I've driven the Model 3. There is no way in hell I'd take a new Model 3 over a used Model S because this is so much smoother, so much quieter, and this giant screen. A used Model S is a much better value, especially when you consider how expensive the Model 3 is. The one I drove was pushing 60 grand, I think, which you can find one of these with half the miles all day long for around 40. Ow, jeez, treat. So, other than higher than average insurance premiums, the key fob battery, and a few extra dollars on my electric bill at home every month, this car has cost me really next to nothing to own. It's also held its value pretty well. As if you check on autotrader.com, there's only a handful of these bigger battery 85 kilowatt models uh, that are under 35 grand. So out of the entire Hoopty fleet, this is my best investment, my wisest purchase, but because I'm an absolute moron, I'm thinking about selling it. And why, you may ask? Well, it's because I'm kind of bored with it. This car, I can't really find its soul. And that's easy to say as a car enthusiast, you can find a soul in a sports car or even in a Miata. But me, I even find soul in the weird cars, like a Toyota Prius, I can find soul with it. And this Tesla, it's just lacking that intangible it factor for me that is just, it's just so important. I keep thinking about how I could sell this thing for a little over $30,000 again and then get in a really nice S-Class again with four massage setting seats and a V12, even though it's probably slower than this, it's just, just, that's just really what tickles me. I, I don't know. There's also plenty of other more luxurious and efficient options as well that have more comfortable seats, but I just have a weird fondness for German misengineering ruining my life. For the average non-deranged Tesla person, especially if they live on the west coast where they don't have temperature extremes like you do here, where it drains the battery in the summer and then it's less efficient in the winter because if the battery's too cold, the regenerative braking shuts off to protect it and some other stuff. There's also tons and tons of supercharger stations out on the West Coast, so it's really easy to keep your Tesla charged. Out here, it's tough because there's one Tesla supercharger station and it's right next to an Applebee's and I'm the only Kansan that doesn't like Applebee's. Speaking of West Coast, I'm going to be at Radwood this Sunday Come and join me out there. The Peterson Automotive Museum is a celebration of 80s and 90s cars, so hopefully I get to see you there. But West Coasters, if you're not a total nut like me, the Tesla Model S, a used one, is a great buy. It's one of the smartest purchases you can make. It's brilliant. It's, it's just too bad that I'm not very smart. Thank you for watching. killed part of a tree. Sue me.